Paul, how you doing, man? Hey, good. How you doing? Good. We're calling from WXYZ ABC Channel 7 in Detroit. That's awesome. This movie and the people that are attached to it and the excitement that is built around it, is is it a movie you can't talk enough about? Because I know it was such a labor of love to get started. Yeah, you know what it is? I feel like there's been so much talk about it yeah. and around it that I'm just the point now where I just want people to see it. You know, it's 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 so funny. It's like having a having a, 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 a critical conversation about a, a song before anybody's listened to it. Yeah. And debating whether the song is good or not. And you're like, well, but you got to hear the song before we can talk about whether it's good or not. <laughs> so I'm just so you know I can't believe the movie will finally be out. And that that's you know as a filmmaker that's all you really work towards. You don't work towards trailers. And you don't work towards you know articles and interviews you really work towards that that thing that is the reason I got into the business which is to have an audience sit in the dark room for two hours and be hopefully very entertained by what we did oh so it's not to have people pick apart a trailer that's so crazy I thought this might, might have gotten <laughs> weirdly no you would think <laughs> that would be my favorite part of the process <laughs> I know you based Freaks and Geeks off of Chippewa Valley now you have Ghostbusters and I talked with my aunt Tina who grew up next door to you and she said Growing up next to six girls and six sisters, she's taking credit for a new female Ghostbusters movie and the inspiration. <laughs> she should. <laughs> she really should. I mean, honestly, that, that was such a formative part of my of my life was was growing up next to the Sampsons and when you know, like you say, the, you know, six girls who were all pretty much my close friends um, um, from Wendy on down, and uh, um, yeah, just kind of you know, as an only child, uh, and close with my mom. And then had all these, you know, fantastic girls who lived next door. And we just, you know, that's all we did was hang out every day, all day. And, you know, did all kinds of, you know, every, every creative thing we could do, doing haunted houses and, and uh, dance. We opened a dance studio in my garage at one point. <laughs> so, yeah, so I just, you know, so I was always, you know, I think some guys kind of grow up so separated from girls or they're just, just their sisters or they either fight with or don't hang out with and so they get a kind of a different take on on women and for me it was just like you know oh these are my friends they're so much fun <laughs> you know that was really that was really you know how I grew up I think what's so cool about what you're doing now with this movie is for generations now of people that will get to watch this movie there are a lot of people that haven't seen the original Ghostbusters, and so this will be their only memories of the Ghostbuster movie. I can, I mean, I can rip off and rattle off a number of friends, my sister, my brother, who haven't seen the original. You're going to set the standard for a lot of people in their heads, and this is Ghostbusters to a lot of people. Well, that's cool. I mean, you know, it, it's uh, it's so interesting because in making this, we're we're so much kind of always thinking about you know people who know the movie and what they expect and all that. But you know, every once in a while, you kind of go like, wait, we're actually. You know, for, there's a lot of people who, like you say, this is the first one they'll see. You know, the hope is that they'll see this and then they'll go back and watch the original one. Yeah. Just, you know, that, that one's so much fun, too. But, yeah, I really wanted this to stand on its own. And even though we're doing all kinds of things that you know, the fans of the original ones will appreciate because they're seeing things, you know, the origin of things from those movies, you know, we really want to make sure that it worked for an audience that just didn't know the Ghostbusters world at all so they can really kind of see the origin story of of this new team and, and just the whole idea of Ghostbusters. I got a tip from a little birdie that actually happened to be your wife. My aunt put me in contact with your wife that there may or may not be a really cool Michigan reference in the movie. Is that true? Uh, oh, yeah. There is. Yeah, there's a, yeah, there's a, there's a joke towards the end um, that Kate McKinnon has that, uh, that I think hopefully the people of Michigan will appreciate. <laughs> I it's, know you, all, it's all good natured. Okay, all right. I know you've worked uh, here in the past. You've been back for book tours and, and, and things. Um, what can you say about your memories here and how it kind of shaped what you've done with your career? And, and I guess, do you have any plans to come back here? I know the tax incentives are gone, but um, I know everyone would love to see you back here soon. Well, I, I mean, I, I love Michigan so much. and I love growing up in the, in the Detroit area. and it, just, it just formed every part of my personality, every part of my sense of humor. I love, you know, the Michigan Midwestern sense of humor. I think we have a very specific thing we find funny. I think we're a very honest people, and so we kind of demand honesty from the yeah. entertainment we watch and the characters that we watch. And you know, we, we you know don't like things that are just kind of big and crazy if it's not grounded in some kind of reality. You know, we we like 
three-dimensional humans because I think we're very, you know, analytical of people and very cautious uh, of people. And, um, you know, so that forms this really great take on the world that is a very smart take on the world, a very open take on the world, but also one that demands a, a level of honesty that, that I think is important for humans to have. Any plans to come back here at all to, to film or shoot or work on anything? I'd love to shoot back there. I mean, like you said, it's a bummer that they lost that tax incentive because yeah. that was, you know, that's sadly, you know, we're in, in Hollywood. All we try to do is try to, you know, save money because <laughs> everything's so expensive. But nothing would make me happier than shooting something back there. I mean, to return back to my back to my home. Um, you know, I don't have a lot of relatives left there at all. But you know, even just having friends like the Sampsons still there, and uh, you know, who I stay in contact with. Yeah. And, have a few, a few aunts and uncles. Um, yeah, I, I just, I just love the Detroit area. You know, it's, it's, you know, I've lived out in L.A. more than half of my life now, but I don't feel like it. I feel like really. I'm always, oh yeah, no, I always feel like I'm a Michigander. No, it's, you know, I mean, even if you see where I live in L.A., it's very <laughs> Midwestern looking. I, you know, kind of gravitated towards, you know, a much more kind of suburban looking, <laughs> you know. <laughs> green with trees kind of area just to, to, to keep that feel. I know, I never, you know, when you're out in L.A., you're kind of essentially out in the desert, um, you know, because you're out west, uh, even though it's lush around here, but it, it's not the same as when you go back to Michigan, just see all that green and those trees and the red yeah. brick. You know, that's, it's these weird things that you grow up with that just mentally get inside your head <laughs> that, that become your comfort zones. And you, you just, whether you know it or not, you're, you're just sort of relaxes the minute you get back in it when you've been away from it. I know for a lot of people that relaxation kind of hits on summer nights watching the Tigers, and I know you're a Tigers fan. Mm-hmm. It's probably tough for you to keep tabs on the team, but uh, do, do you keep your Detroit sports fanhood, I guess, uh, loud at all in, out in L.A.? I, I try. I, I'm, I'm not the biggest follower of, of, of sports. I mean, I always was a dyed-in-the-wool Tigers fan got to see like Mark Fidrich pitch <laughs> you oh, know yeah. when I was a kid and stuff like that so yeah I try to keep up as much as I can um just because you know that's the only it's the only team I root for I did the math you were about 22 when the original came out um mm-hmm. I'm sure like anybody that that did get to see that for the first time you're enamored with the humor of the stars what was it like putting those guys and those stars back now with your Ghostbusters in this movie for the brief time you had them on set it was unbelievable I mean you know those are my absolute comedy heroes i mean you know when, when i went to see you know i saw an opening night back in 84 you know i was, I was still in usc film school at the time and um you know being a fanatic of a uh, lover of, of, of bill and of dan and of harold you know and, and then you know seeing how amazing it was and how big it was and then you know flash forward all you know all this time and um suddenly there I've you know I've got them on my set and they're helping out and they're so cool I mean I remember very just I had a very very distinct dream when I was a teenager that I was best friends with Dan Aykroyd come on yeah I remember waking <laughs> up going like oh it's a drug I was so mad it's like damn it it was a dream I thought for sure I was really close with Dan Aykroyd and now I know him and he's so nice and you know he's helped out and, and it's, it's it's you do pinch yourself I mean I you know being a, a kid from from you know Michigan, being the, you know suburban Michigan. Yeah. You know, I never. You know, you, you'd watch movies and they were like a foreign thing. You're like, oh, that must be on another planet. And the fact that I have been able over the course of my career to be out here and to get to work with these people and meet my heroes, you know, it's it's just you really got to pinch yourself. Well, and the rapport you've built up in the working relationship, especially with Melissa McCarthy, Kristen Wiig. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, to work with two two mega stars and 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 comedian powerhouses like them has that been a pinch yourself moment to look and say all right I, i'm her go-to director and she's my go-to star oh yeah no it's really cool because you also remember kind of you know like when we did bridesmaids like you know she had been on tv shows but hadn't really done them you know any kind of a big role in a movie and i had been sort of drummed out of the, the movie business because my <laughs> first two movies had not done well and then you know so we both kind of went into it like kind of you know okay we're, we're newcomers and there's nothing at stake because we're just, here we are and then suddenly you know movie goes does hugely well and melissa's getting nominated for an oscar and, you know and then suddenly we're gonna make more movies yeah i mean you know everybody in hollywood the only goal is to be able to make the projects you want to make and suddenly i'm at a point where you know, it's still not, it's not, you know, 100% easy as I can get anything made, but I 
I've yeah. got a much better shot at getting things made than, than a lot of people, and, and I don't, I do not take that lightly. And the, the, the biggest pressure with that is making sure you you uphold a level of quality um, so that they let you keep making it. Because as we know, in Hollywood, you're only as good as your last thing. Yeah. <laughs> so it keeps you on your toes, but uh, it made a great way. I I wouldn't have gone ahead any other way. Well, listen, Paul, I don't doubt that this is going to be a hit, and I don't doubt that you're going to keep making hits, and uh, I really, really, really appreciate you doing this today, and I know you're a busy guy, so thank you so much. No, my pleasure. Thanks.